So the next question is, uh, it, it relates to, to the similar issue. Um, and Warner, I'll ask you first. Uh, what is your opinion regarding the data regarding prophylactic uh, ophorectomy? Um, and the, obviously the part of that is, you know, what are the downsides associated with this? And obviously this is in the setting of a, of a concern about risk of ovarian cancer. Well, I mean, when you look at women who happen to be BR, BRCA positive, there's no question that a prophylactic oophorectomy is probably the best preventative strategy in terms of reducing their risk of ovarian cancers. And generally recommended when women are done with childbearing or at least before the age if they have a family member that's been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I mean, the, the problem with it is the timing. And obviously, you don't want to do it too early and incur early menopause in women and the attendant consequences of that and hormone replacement. And that's, that's sort of the tricky part of this is how to counsel women in terms of significantly reducing their cancer risk while, without incurring early menopause. And that's the balanced discussion that we have with patients and women. But at the, at the same time, you know, we, have, we do have methods to address symptomatic menopause and, 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 and monitor as well as support with hormone replacement and I don't think that there are studies that have substantiated an increased risk of metabolic or other life-long uh, medical consequences of replacement uh, with careful monitoring in symptomatic individuals. Let me just pose a question to my two GYN oncology colleagues. Should that be a prophylactic oophorectomy or a prophylactic salpingo oophorectomy? I think it's understood yeah. that we're talking about bilateral salpingo oophorectomy and there's so even some argument that in the future we may be thinking about um, a more dominant role of the fallopian tube in terms of our surgical prevention, but that's still an investigational issue. I think it's an important, Bob, to recognize that there are a, a significant fraction of quote-unquote ovarian cancers that do originate in the tube, and so there are multiple groups, including a big group in Canada and British Columbia, that are looking at just prophylactic salpingectomies, and hopefully we can bypass this issue of early menopause and hormone replacement therapy. And that's in the general population of women undergoing abdominal surgeries who have completed childbearing but not in high-risk women. I guess the other question is uh, what uh, level of risk reduction do you hope to gain by doing that? Well, I think right now we, we, we see an over 90 percent risk reduction with a standard operation in high-risk individuals and I would expect to see the same rate um, in the general population. There's uh, one other additional complexity in, the, in this patient population we need to appreciate that these obviously are uh, patients with uh, germline abnormalities who are at very high risk for breast cancer too. So patients who will undergo ophorectomy and then hormone replacement therapy almost assuredly require prophylactic mastectomies to be safe. Yeah, the only uh, and the other point I wanted to, the, the uh, the idea of, of only taking out the fallopian tubes is of, of great interest, but with the uh, evidence that removing the ovaries and fallopian tubes reduces the risk um, 80 to 90 percent, it's going to be very hard to argue in someone at a high risk only to take out the fallopian tubes. Oh, absolutely. So, at this uh, point, I think that the, I, yeah. we, I would totally agree with that. Yeah, so I, what I would just say, I, I wouldn't want anyone to conclude with a very interesting theory that you might be able to reduce the risk of early menopause, that right. a woman be denied the evidence of the benefit, which is sure. unfortunately a, a, a more aggressive procedure from the perspective of, of the sure. uh, postmenopausal symptoms. And it's, uh, it's under investigation, and I think that in, in the general population, not at high risk, um, that at the time of an abdominal surgery in, in a setting uh, where a woman has completed childbearing, that I think it's reasonable to offer salpingectomy um, to a premenopausal woman. And I think the other uh, point to be made too is when we discuss this with patients, we've got to make sure that they understand that this does not make the risk zero even though the quote ovaries have been removed unquote uh, because uh, these neoplasms can arise elsewhere in the abdominal cavities. And the, actually the